Hi, Dr. Crowder here. This is a video that I am making to go through an example of how we use a three-point test cross to map the genetic distances of three linked loci. To be able to map genes re relative to each other that are linked on the same chromosome, geneticists have long used a cross called a three-point test cross. And I'm illustrating here a three-point test cross between two diploid organisms where we're tracking three linked genes, the gene I, the gene TO, and the gene RED. In a three-point test cross, it is set up such that you cross an individual that is heterozygous for all three genes. So here on the left is an individual that is heterozygous for the I gene, the TO gene, and the RED gene. And on the right, we do a test cross by crossing it to an individual that is homozygous recessive for all three genes. Now it's very important to remember that when you're approaching a three-point test cross, you don't know either the order of the genes in relation to each other, so whether it is indeed the I comes first and then toe and then red. Also, you don't know the arrangement of the alleles of each gene in the heterozygous parent, where we discussed that alleles can be in cis, meaning that the alleles of the similar nature are on the same homologue. So in this case, the way that it's written, the alleles are in cis, so you've got the dominant wild type I gene, TO gene, and RED gene all on one homolog, and the recessive alleles of those genes on the other homolog, as it's written here. That's cis. In contrast, we also discussed that alleles can be in trans, meaning that alleles of different nature, natures are on the opposite homolog. An example of this would be if the wild type dominant I allele was on the top homolog, but then let's say this was reversed so that the wild type dominant TO allele was on the other homolog. We would then say that I and TO are in trans, the alleles are in trans. But again, I just want to reemphasize the way that the alleles are written here for the heterozygous parent, apparent, both the arrangement of alleles on the two homologs and the order of genes is arbitrary. We don't know that. It's simply being written this way, and we need to analyze the progeny of the three-point test cross to be able to determine that. So to reemphasize, a three-point test cross allows us to determine three things. As we just noted, we don't know the arrangement of alleles in the heterozygous parent. And so here is an example again where it's written on the top, the alleles are all in cis. However, again, we don't know that that's the case. The other possibilities for the allele arrangements in the heterozygous parent are written here. And in these possibilities, the alleles are arranged in some configuration in trans to each other where here you have the little i, the big toe, and the big red on one homolog, the big i, the little toe, and the little red. And then we've got two other options below. So again, we don't know the arrangement of alleles in the heterozygous parent, but we can determine that by analyzing progeny of the test cross. The thing we can determine from analyzing the test cross is the physical order of genes on the chromosomes, meaning that here, again, we wrote the genes as i, toe, red in that order, but we don't know if that's the case. And I've written the other possible arrangements here where you could have the toe gene linked to the eye, linked to the red, red eye toe, toe eye red. So again, here are the different possibilities for the order of genes, which we're going to determine from our test cross. The thing that a three-point test cross allows you to determine is the physical genetic distance between the genes. So here I'm illustrating that the order is indeed eye, toe, red, and that between the I gene and the TO gene, there's 13 map units distance. Between the TO gene and the RED gene, there's 19 map units distance. So you would have to be given data from a three-point test cross to deduce the genetic distance. But again, the 
three-point test cross allows us to determine the parental arrangement of alleles, the physical order of genes on a chromosome, and the genetic distance between those genes if they are indeed linked. So now we're going to walk through an example problem of how you would solve the parental arrangement of alleles, the gene order, and the genetic distance by analyzing a three-point test cross. We're in this problem. We are studying a gene called I, and we've discovered that I is linked to two other genes, toe and red, meaning that I, toe, and red genes are all on the same chromosome. You perform a three-point test cross and obtain the results below. So up top, we are crossing our heterozygous parent, that is trihybrid, or heterozygous for all three genes, to our test cross homozygous recessive parent. And then here are all of the progeny that result from that test cross, where we're indicating the different progeny genotypes and how many progeny have that genotype. And just to note, again, the capital letters indicate wild genes, the lowercase letters are the recessive mutant alleles of those genes, and the allele arrangement and the gene order that is written is arbitrary, as we've already discussed. So now I'm going to go through the steps that I like to follow when analyzing the progeny and the data from a three-point test cross. The first thing I like to do is to determine the parental class. The parental class is the class that has the most amount of progeny with that genotype. So in this example, that would be here and here. And we know that in a three-point test cross, all of the progeny are going to inherit one homolog from the homozygous recessive parent, and that would be this one. And so we can, by and large, ignore that homolog when analyzing our progeny, and we really want to focus on the homolog inherited by from the heterozygous parent. So again, we identify our parental class as the most frequent class, and we've identified it as this class with 69 progeny and this class with 73 progeny. It's the most frequent class of all of the progeny classes. And the parental class then tells us the arrangement of alleles in the heterozygous parent. Because the most frequent class, or the parental class, is the class for which there were no crossovers in meiosis in the heterozygous parent. So the homologs, or the chromosome inherited, are identical to the chromosomes in the heterozygous parent. So again, in this example, here we have this parental class, and this tells us that in the parent, on one homolog, this was the arrangement of alleles. So in this heterozygous parent, the arrangement of alleles was really big I, little toe, big red gene. And then we look at the other parental class, which would be the opposite of the first one, so the, the homologs are paired, where on the other class we would have little i, since again we know this parent's heterozygous, so if big i is on one homolog, little i has to be on the other, and then we have big toe, little red. So this is the true arrangement of alleles in the heterozygous parent. So we could say that I, the I gene, and the red gene are in cis because on one homolog we have both the wild type dominant alleles and on the other homolog we have the recessive mutant alleles. And we would say that the toe gene then is arranged in trans with the I and the red alleles where you have the little toe gene on the same homolog with the big or wild type dominant genes and then the wild type dominant toe gene on the same homolog with the um, mutant recessive genes of the other. So the toe gene is in cyst. So again, by looking at the parental class, which is the most frequent class, we can determine the arrangement of alleles in the heterozygous parent. And so now here in the slide, I've just rewritten the genotype of the heterozygous parent to reflect the allele arrangement that we deduced by examining the progeny from the three-point test cross. So to do when analyzing the three-point test cross is to determine the double crossover class. The double crossover class is the least frequent class. And it's the least frequent class because as you might expect, the 
percentage of time where you're going to see two crossovers within the region of these three loci is going to happen much less frequently than when you would have one crossover event. And so it's the least frequent class. And from analyzing the double crossover class, we can then determine the gene order. And we determine the gene order by comparing the double crossover class to the arrangement of the parental allele configurations. We just went over the parental allele configurations. And so what we look for in that double crossover class is the allele or the gene that has switched linkage, meaning that which allele or which gene, which alleles for which gene, have switched linkage with the other alleles compared to the parental class. And if you compare the homologs of this double crossover class, where now we have big eye, big toe, and big red on one homolog, little eye, little toe, and little red on the other, inherited from the parent, we could see that then in the parent class, big eye and big red were indeed on the same homolog, and little eye and little red were on the other. In the double crossover class, that remains the same. However, if you look at the toe gene, the alleles have switched linkage. Excuse me, this should say linkage. Such that in the parental class, again, the toe alleles were in trans with the other two. And in this case now, we have big toe linked with big eye and big red and little toe now on the same homolog as little eye and little red. And so again, that tells us that then, in meiosis of the heterozygous parent, there had to have been a double crossover between the two intervals of these genes. And so based on that information, the allele or the gene that has switched linkage, which in this case is toe, is then the gene that is in the middle. Because that's the only way if you were to follow this crossover, that's the only way that could lead to this least frequent genotype. So if you have big eye, crossover, big toe, crossover, big red. Now you've got big eye, big toe, big red on one homolog, and we see that as one of the double crossover classes, the least frequent class. And then we've got little eye, little toe, little red. And again, we see that as the other least frequent class. So the gene or the alleles of the gene that have switched linkage in the double crossover progeny is the gene that's in the middle. And so the way we've gotten written, written here is actually correct, that the toe gene is in the middle of the eye and the red gene based on the data from our double crossover class, which is abbreviated as DCO. So again, we don't need to make any changes to how our genotype is written here because we've just deduced that the order of genes is correct. It's I, toe, and red. It is just as likely or just as accurate to reverse these where we could have red, toe, I. We can't distinguish between those two possibilities. However, we know that toe is in the middle. Now what we can do is calculate the genetic distance. And we do that by adding up the recombinant classes and determining the recombinant frequencies. And what you want to do is you want to determine the recombinant classes between the middle locus and the two outer ones. You don't, you don't want to start by determining the genetic distance or the classes, the recombination frequency of the outermost genes, so between I and red, because it's not as accurate of a measurement because you're going to miss the double crossover class. So let's look at the distance between the I and the toe gene. What we want to do is look at and add up all of the recombinant classes. So we want to look again to our parental configuration where we have big I and little toe on the same homolog, little I and big toe on the same homolog. And we want to look at all of the progeny where that has switched, indicating a recombination event happened. So that has switched here in this class. That is switched here in this class, where now we've got big eye with big toe, little eye with little toe, different than the parental allele arrangement. Where else has it switched? 
Oh, it's switched right here. Big eye and big toe. And it's also switched right here. Little eye and little toe. So these are the four classes where a recombination event happened, a crossover happened between those two genes in the parent. So we would add up those recombinant classes. So one plus one plus 10 plus eight. So what does that give us? 20. So there's a total of 20 progeny where recombinate that resulted from a recombination in the parent between the eye and the toe. We take the total number of recombinants and divide it by the total number of progeny. So in this case, it's 200. So that gives us 10% recombinant frequency RF, which equals 10 map units or centimorgans. So we could say that the distance between eye and toe is 10 map units, which is directly proportional to the recombination frequency, meaning that 10% of the time in 10% of meioses, there is a crossover between the eye locus and the toe locus. Now we're going to repeat the process looking at the genetic distance between toe and red, where we need to add up all the recombinants. So again, in the parent, toe and red are in trans, and so we need to see where that's changed in the progeny. It's changed in this class, the double crossover class, where now we've got big toe and big red. In this class, little toe and little red. It's also changed in this class, where we've got little toe, little red, and in this class, big toe, big red. So to calculate the genetic distance between toe and red, we will add up those classes. So one plus one plus 21 plus 17. That equals 40. So there's a total of 40 progeny where a recombination event or crossover has occurred between toe and red in this parent. If we divide 40 by the total number of progeny, which is 200. That gives us a 20% recombination frequency. So we would say that toe and red are 20 map units apart. Meaning that 20% of the time, a recombination event is going to happen between the toe and the red locus. So now we've calculated our genetic map that's at the top of the screen. And I just want to point out what I've done now is I reorganized the data, which we could have done at the very beginning once we identified the parental class. Where all of the progeny genotype classes are in pairs, and they're in pairs because there are two possible homologs that result from a recombination event in meiosis in this parent. Where here we've got our two double crossover classes, and they're opposite of each other, big eye, big toe, big red, little eye, little toe, little red. So they're the two homologous chromosome products from a crossover event or double crossover event in this parent. The second class listed here is the parental class, where these are the two products from meiosis that would be received in a gamete, and so these two homologs have not undergone recombination in the parent. The third class we see is a result of a crossover between the eye and the toe gene. So you can see the two homologous chromosomes that result from that, that would be passed on to different gametes. And then the fourth class is a result of a single crossover between the toe and the red locus. And so it's the, the two progeny classes that will result from that. So three-point test cross is a long-used tool in genetics that allows us to be able to determine the parental arrangement of alleles in a heterozygous parent. It allows us to determine the physical order of linked genes. And it allows us to determine the genetic distance between those two genes all by analyzing the progeny from crossing a triple heterozygous or trihybrid parent to a homozygous recessive parent. So I hope that this video was helpful in showing you how to walk through analyzing data from a three-point test cross to be able to determine all of these metrics of linked genes.